Morning rose over the African savannah. Everyone was anticipating the coming of the dry season. It would mean that life would be hard and many of their friends would migrate and be gone for a long time. But the land was getting dry much too early. The poor worm complained that the ground was too dry and she'd probably dry right up. I'll probably just dry right up. All the animals complained that there just wasn't enough water to drink. So they decided they had to go and see the wise one, the wise old leopard, who surely know what to do. Bo the termite asked the wise one to speak. He gave Quentin the hyena a map, and Quentin thanked him and set the map where everyone could see it. Then he explained how they must use it. You must follow the path until you come to a crystal. They had to follow the path to find a magic crystal that had been stolen. That map would lead them to the cave where it was, but someone had, be, had to be brave enough to go. Luckily, there was the worm, the bravest of all. <laughs> I am brave enough to do this. Everyone said, oh, she's brave. <laughs> and she took that map and set out on the path through the forest. But we don't know what happened to the worm. She did not return that night. <laughs> And even the next morning, she did not return. Someone else had to go. Well, second bravest was, of course, the termite. The termite said, I will, I will go and solve this problem. I will go and solve this problem. And he followed the worm's path. And everyone said, oh, he's brave. Oh. But the termite didn't return either. <coughs> and the next morning, they looked at each other to see who would be brave enough to go next. Luckily, there was a lion. I must do this myself. Everyone said, oh, he's almost as brave as a worm. <laughs> he's almost as brave as a worm. <laughs> well, the lion didn't return either. And the next day, no one wanted to go. They were all <laughs> afraid. And so the animals went to sleep that night, worrying about what would happen to their land. Even Sophia the bunny went to sleep. <laughs> well, early in the morning, the mother leopard woke up and, of course, went to take care of her baby, but her little baby Tosina was missing. She searched around, but she couldn't find her. She, she called all the other animals to come and help her search. They looked around, but they didn't see the baby anywhere. And she realized she was going to have to follow that dangerous path that the other animals followed. She asked, for the animals to come with her. But they all kind of turned away and whistled and twiddled their thumbs and <laughs> pretended not to hear her. <laughs> she had to go alone. But there's nothing braver than a mother protecting her child. She had to go carefully. She followed the trails. She even found the map that the others had lost. 
But then she saw a cave with skeletons standing guard, and she ran away frightened. She had to get help. I have to have help. And she showed them the mat, and the animals felt bad for not coming with her before this, so they said, we'll help you, Mrs. Lepers. And so she led them back down the path, but she told them to be careful and stay off of the paths, because that's where the traps were. Finally, they came to that cave, and they looked, and there were those huge skeletons standing guard. What could they do? Well. The giraffe and the two bunnies decided to try and talk to the skeletons. So they went right up to them. The giraffe said, we need the magic crystal back. We need the magic crystal back. And the bunnies said, please give back the baby leopard. Please give back the baby leopard. But the skeletons. No, go away. <laughs> skeletons just said, go away. Well, the crocodile and the wise old leopard had another plan. The leopard said, let's disguise ourselves as skeletons. Disguise ourselves as skeletons. Crocodile said, that's a good idea. We'll hang bones in front of us. And they did. They hanged bones from their necks. They walked up to the skeletons. The leopard said, we're here to take your place. We're here to take your place. And the crocodile said, so you can go away now. So you can go away now. You can't fool me. You are not skeletons. Go away. <laughs> that plan didn't work either. Well, the bunnies knew they had one great strength. They decided to challenge the skeletons to a leaping contest. The bunnies hopped as high as they could, again and again. But the skeletons jumped higher. <laughs> What could they do? Well, it was on Mother Leopard again to figure out what to do. She decided to try singing a lullaby. Let's try singing a lullaby. Alessandra the wildebeest said, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Because the lullaby would put the skeletons to sleep. The lullaby would put the skeletons to sleep. So they began to sing an old African lullaby. Ooh, too. Skeletons, ye bake. Woo to woo to woo to the skeletons, ye bake. The skeletons fell into a heap fast asleep. And so they had. You have destroyed my skeleton guard. Eek, eek. It was never. <laughs> She ran away, and then Mother Leopard and her friends could go in and rescue everyone and get back the crystal. They gave, Quentin gave the crystal to the wise old leopard because he wouldn't know what to do with it. And they rescued the baby leopard, and they all went back home proud that they had saved their day. And to celebrate, they made a song. And together they sang their song.
But lucky for them, they found a nice big termite mound. Plenty of termites to eat. And they were happy, but the queen termite was not happy at all. She decided, in fact, she was so unhappy, she put a magic spell on them. If termite food is what you think that you will drink. She put a spell on them to make them so thirsty, all they could do was drink. But they didn't have any water. They had to run and find water. Now, meanwhile, all the other animals were down at the water hole getting a drink. It was the end of the dry season. There wasn't much water. They were getting as much as they could, hoping the wet season would start soon. Well, when the meerkats came to the water hole, all those big animals were in the way. They couldn't get through. But those big animals just ignored them. Finally, they got so angry, they stood up and said, we're going to get water and not share with you at all. We're going to get some water and not share with you at all. And so they went off in a huff back to their burrow. So the animals headed back home to rest for the evening. Meanwhile, back in the meerkat's burrow, they were digging. They were tunneling underneath all the water holes to make all the water flow into their burrow so they could drink and drink and drink and drink. But because of the magic spell, they couldn't stop drinking. Their bellies started to get so full they could hardly move. Oh, but they just kept drinking anyway. Alex and Meerkat said, I can't stop drinking. I can't stop drinking. Mason said, me either. Me either. <laughs> but what could they do? Well, late that night, the baby lions were out. They went from one water hole to another, but it was all dried up. They knew they had to do something. Kaylee said, there's no water anywhere. There's no water anywhere. We need to go and meet it. So James called out loud and all the animals came. <coughs> the baby lions told them what happened. going to have to search. Nicholas the leopard said, let's go search by the acacia tree. Let's go search by the acacia tree. And so the leopards went one way, the lions went another. They searched around, but they didn't find any water. All the water holes had a hole in the bottom. <laughs> that was kind of suspicious. So they decided to listen to the ground. And Willa the leopard heard something. She was sure. I hear someone moaning down in there. It was those meerkats moaning and still drinking water. <laughs> and this is what was happening in the meerkats' burrow. The two of them were lying there still drinking water, even though their bellies were almost up to the ceiling. Oh, and they were just moaning. Well, the animals didn't know what to do. They needed to find out what was going on. Well, luckily, that's when Gianna the giraffe showed up. She had seen the whole thing. And she told them how the queen termite used her magic. The queen termite put a spell on the meerkats. That's why they can't stop drinking. That's why they can't stop drinking. And so, Miles the leopard said, we better dig them out. We better dig them out. 
And all the leopards started digging, making that hole bigger and bigger and bigger until finally they stood back and they saw the meerkats lying there with their bellies full of water, still drinking and moaning. They said, we can't come out. Our bellies are too big. <laughs> well, now that they knew that the queen termite was behind this, they decided to send the cheetah. I'll go find the queen termite. And bring and her they, back. And they decided to have a court case. <laughs> now, the, the elephant being the leader decided to hear everyone's side. The queen explained why she used her magic that way. Um, the meerkats were eating too many termites. Well, the elephant thought about it for a long time, and finally, he made his decision. He told her, you can't use a punishment that punishes everyone. You have to use your magic to help and not hurt. Well, the termite queen was sorry, and she waved her hands to take the spell off of the meerkats. And finally, they could stop drinking. Oh, and they could get us with their big bellies. Well, just then, what do you think happened? The water was still flowing down into that burrow, and it began to fill up to make one great big new water hole. The animals could drink at last, all except the meerkats. They didn't want to drink anything. And when the animals had drank their full, they stood back to talk about what they had learned that day. The meerkats apologized to the queen termite. He promised these other things than termites and dead. <laughs> and the queen also apologized. She promised that she would use her magic to help others. I promised to use my magic to help, not her. And to show that she had really learned her lesson, she made a song, and they all sang with her. The kids wrote the story, they wrote the songs that you heard, except that particular song, Eva, the queen, wrote that one herself. Come and share the stage.